Thank you guys so much for your amazing support while I've been away. The good news is I'm back and doing well and ready to make some more awesome videos for you guys. Your patience shall be rewarded. It feels good to be back, so let's just jump straight back into it. So my aunt. My aunt moved in with us 16 years ago, after she divorced her husband and brought her two daughters with her. That wasn't the problem. We've always been a very close family. My cousins are like sisters to me, especially the older one, who, admittedly, conceived because my aunt saw my mum with a baby and wanted one too. My cousin is 11 months younger than me. The problem was, we lived in what once was a two-bedroom home. Me, my mum, and my grandparents. Just before my aunt moved in, we had some work done on the house and added two more bedrooms. But before that, I had to share a room with my mum. Imagine being 15 and still sharing a room with your mum. I was so excited to finally have a bedroom all to myself and now that was gone because three more people were moving in and we had turned one of the bedrooms into an office. The new plan was for me to continue sharing a bedroom with mum. Grandparents had one to themselves and my aunt and her daughters would get the master bedroom because three people would be sleeping there. It was a huge suite. There would be no crowding whatsoever. That wasn't good enough for her. Nope. She decided the office would be her bedroom. Looking back, I keep thinking why the heck no one was against that plan. I remember being slightly outraged. Like, I lost my own bedroom privileges. Why did she get to have a room to herself? But the respect your elders had been drilled into me, and so I never said a word. She turned the office into a bedroom, and we thought that would be the end of it. But it never really is with entitled parents, is it? Because, you see, the office was next to the living room and had frosted glass doors again, because that wasn't supposed to be a bedroom. So now she wanted everyone to turn off the living room lights and keep the TV volume at a minimum, starting 8 p.m. This caused arguments every single night. My mum and I are both night owls. We're usually up till at least 3 a.m. and, at the time, didn't have a TV in our room. So the living room was the only place we could be. For a while, we settled that by doing what she wanted after 10 p.m. But eventually, that wasn't enough either. All suggestions of getting earplugs or sleeping masks were denied, and she usually called me entitled, saying I wanted to rule the house, when she was the one trying to control what happened in a room she wasn't even in. We also suggested that she switch rooms with me, so she'd share a room with my mum and could go to bed as early as she wanted. So one day, I suggested she cover up the frosted door door glass with something. Wallpaper, a curtain, anything. She said she couldn't afford it. She'd been unemployed for 10 years, living here rent free and having her bills paid by her kids. Which was a lie. She spent money every day on cigarettes and we found some contact paper that would do for $10. She still claimed not to have any money. I went ahead and paid for it, just so she would shut up. That settled the light issues and we'd be keeping the noise down and that was that, finally. I have a ton of other stories involving her, like if mum and I were ordering food, we would need to order for her and her kids as well. But when she wants to eat takeout, she actually drives to the place and eats there with her kids, so she doesn't have to get it for us too. Though when we go out for food, we need to bring her something. How she's allowed to borrow clothes and shoes without asking, but if we want something, we need to ask. How her youngest daughter decided to live in London for six months, didn't have enough money to buy her ticket back, so her father bought the ticket he could afford, which was one coming through France, and my aunt couldn't believe he didn't buy her a no layover ticket, which was the most expensive one, when she didn't put in a dime to help. She was unemployed for 14 of the 15 years she lived with us, and expected her kids to pay for her things phone bill, dog food and vet consultations for her dog, cigarettes, etc. Mum, me and grandpa paid for all of the house bills for that time. She says no every time we ask her to help out with grandpa regarding taking him to the doctors, showers, etc. He had a stroke back in August last year, yet complains he likes us better. She suffered from anxiety and says that's why she couldn't go out to the job interviews. And I totally understand how anxiety can be crippling. Yet when I started having panic attacks, couldn't sleep at night, and slept through the day, I just had to focus on other things 
and not let the anxiety win or I'd never get better. Sometimes she loses things like lighters, hairbrush, painkillers, etc. And the first thing she says is, someone stole, insert thing. It's only us at home, so you're saying we took it? She goes in our rooms. My cousins have since moved out and I finally have my own bedroom. And if she finds anything remotely similar to what she's looking for, she takes it. My other aunt never married and never had kids. And she said when she dies, everything she owns will go to me. Her thought process was, the house we live in is my mum's, aunt one and entitled aunt's name. So my mum doesn't have anything to pass down to me, which is why I'll be inheriting her stuff. Entitled aunt took offense to that because, what about my kids? Even though her kids already have enough coming to them from their dad. That is, two whole houses, a car, a motorcycle, etc. A year after my dog died of old age, I decided to adopt one. My aunt tried to convince me not to get one because she already had a dog and she didn't want her dog to be upset by a new dog. As I said, grandpa had a stroke last year, so we decided to put him up in my aunt's room, our ex office, so he wouldn't have to go up two flights of stairs. We also put up another bed downstairs and take turns sleeping on it as to keep an eye on him. And she would take his bedroom. My aunt, being my aunt, decided she didn't like my grandpa's old room and she expected me to switch rooms with her. Which was funny because when I suggested she should sleep there, in the main story above, she said she didn't like my bedroom. Except now she wouldn't have to share it, she wanted it. We had first put the extra bed in the office bedroom to sleep next to grandpa, in case he needed something. But my aunt kept saying the room was too stuffy. So she dragged the bed out into the living room. Yes, we now have a bed in the living room. And is now back to demanding we turn off lights and volume down when it's her turn to sleep downstairs. We agreed to do so when it's 10 p.m. Then everyone goes to their own bedrooms and you don't dare come out for a snack in the middle of the night or she'll bite your head off. I turn to storing snacks in my room for the nights she's the one sleeping downstairs. I cannot imagine being in the same house as someone like this for so long for 15 years? I know for some people it's family and you just sort of have to, but man, either kick them out if you can or get out of there as soon as you can yourself. You just know that every day is going to be a stressful situation and home is supposed to be a sanctuary, not a war zone with an entitled parent. July 4th weekend won't be complete without an entitled parent's trip to the beach. So as you can expect, I signed up for weekend work because, well, hello double time all weekend. I got to work and was told by my supervisor that parking for the area had filled up fast and I was there at 10 a.m. Gates to the beach open at 7 a.m. Parking was full at 9.30 a.m. I come in and start working, telling people firmly, there is no parking here, keep moving. Hearing things from, but my friend's family are inside and they say there's lots of parking, to, can I drop my kids off? Or, my wife is pregnant, can you let me drop her off inside? All met with the words, no, move along. Basically, if you were a bus and had a handicap sticker, residence or camp worker goer, you were not allowed in. A lot of annoyed people, but they don't pay me. Along either side of the gated entrance was a long stretch of road. Both sides of said road had no parking, no stopping signs. This is important for later to our story. For the most part, people paid attention and kept moving. Also, people parked about two kilometers, one mile, something to walk down and walk though. About roughly 20 minutes to get to the beach. Around 1.30, I had another family come in, said the same thing I always do. However, this was a Karen. Had the haircut and everything, but tiny mean Karen. But you were thinking, OP, this is entitled parents. Where are her precious babies? Give me a bit. You know the cast. EM Karen, ED Todd, me Obi Wan Kenobi, Supervisor 1 and 2, SV 1 and 2. Excuse me, where do we park? Anywhere but here. Move along, please. But where was that? Why is your gate closed? You can't be full already. Anywhere. We are full, and yes, we are. Move along. About 5 or 10 minutes go by and I have been informed by a few residents that there will be guests coming at 12.30 for lunch. 
and they had pieces of paper to say they were there for that address only. Hot SUV shows up and he informs me of things going on in the beach and there is still no available parking. I confirm and let him in along with the bus, but as I close the gate, EM's family almost charged the gate in their piece of crap Dodge Grand Caravan. Hi, what's up? Excuse me, but you're rude to me. I'm like that with everyone. Let me finish. I have two toddlers in the car plus a 10 month old. Can you please let us in? Plus if there's an issue with the virus, why are you letting people walk in? No, I don't care that you have children. Back up and please leave. Excuse me, answer my question. You heard me. I go to the back of their car and help them back up. Now Karen is out of her car. Why won't you let us in? Parks and Rec won't allow any cars in. Todd now gets out of the car, starts charging towards me. That's bullcrap. If the park is full, why are people walking in? I can't control foot traffic, just motor vehicles, which is what you are. But why don't you just let us in? Ten cars have come out and they have done, so why don't you let us in? I'll check to see if there is a spot for us. You are lying. You just don't want us in there. Because you are not paying me to open the gate or count the cars. And no, I don't care what you do. Are you going to pay me to count cars and let you in? No, why? I didn't think so. Who is your manager? Metro Vancouver. No, you idiot, your boss. Radio him and ask him if there are any spots. We have children and would like to take them to the beach today. Me radioing in Parks and Rec that we have a situation up at gate one. I hear over the radio, somebody is coming. Manager's on the way. Good. I want to ask him my questions myself. More like Karen's questions over again. He kept trying to charge at me. SV1 shows up about five minutes later and one of the residents is now behind the van already. Explaining the situation, he had no problem he can wait. Todd is fuming I'm not taking this seriously enough. Karen and Todd get in SV1's face right away. Even with the two meter rule, Todd thought he was still in the right. Why are you not letting people into the park? Even EM almost copied over what he said. I'm not going to talk to you, just your wife. Cause she asked first, and she's nicer to me. Turns to wife. Because we have so many spots and even if there is something open, we still need to keep it on reserve for first responders and people with disabilities. But we've seen people walking out of the park and driving out with cars. Why can't we go in? He is yelling at this point. Sir, you're being very rude to me by yelling, so I'm just going to answer your wife's questions. Why are you letting foot traffic in? It doesn't seem fair we should have to walk a long way with our children for about an hour at the beach. Everyone here is doing it. We don't provide special treatment to anybody. Stops car in front of her. Hi sir, are you getting to the beach today? Can't here in the car. Great, thanks. See, they have children and they're walking from whatever point to the beach with their children. Well, that's not fair. I want to speak to your manager. I want to see your policy on people walking to the beach. For real. Do you have a smartphone? Yes, I do. What kind of question is that? Go back to your job. Yelling at me. I am doing my job. Look up the policy online under our website. There is no policy or rules about this stuff and it isn't available to the public anyhow. Seriously, get lost and do your job. She is doing her job. She is keeping me safe and not getting hit by a car. You both are the only ones holding up traffic. To the residents and to other beachgoers who have or are finding parking. Also, I don't appreciate you yelling at our staff. I'm not yelling at you or your staff. I want to speak to your boss now. And I want a tow truck to get your butts out. But we can't get what we want. The frick you say to me, you little bee? Me radioing. We need backup and police. It's best you call the police. It is best now to get back in your car and leave. There are now two residents here who would like to go home and you're blocking the entrance. ED getting more angry until SV2 shows up. Please remove your vehicle or we'll call the police and remove you by force. I'll not remove my car until I get a straight answer out of somebody other than that gosh darn flagger. Me, B-cell activated. The both of you get back into your car right freaking now or I'll whack you over the head with my paddle in front of your gosh darn kids 
and I will have no remorse over it. Now get the frick out of here. Todd now starts filming me because I am now visibly ticked off. Karen is now shaking and is pulling Todd back to the car while on the phone to police about the threat in front of her babies. Not my finest hour, but the SV1 and 2 didn't care. Anything at this point would have helped. I know you're filming me, jerk, so get out of here. What's your name? Kiss my butt. It's French for get lost. Your real name? That is my real name. Just shut up. We are leaving. It didn't have to end like this. You could have let us in. No, but it did. Our worker felt threatened by you and she made the call to help because you were not listening to her. That's on you. That's your fault. SV2 offered them a number to call and complain to on Monday, but they said no. As they were driving away, ED screams he will call our officers to complain, to which SV2 offered the card. The residents were grateful, but even were kind of shaking their heads at the two of them screaming at me and my workers. Also, the police did come, but by that time, they had left. We filled in a report. On the plus side, because I took a picture of the license plate, the officer did find them and had their car removed without them from the park. Permanently. I guess they shouldn't have parked on the side of the road with the no parking sign above them. Don't you just love how entitled parents always make it worse for themselves? Yes, you were inconvenienced, but you know what's a lot more inconvenient? Being permanently banned from that parking spot. So good luck having to walk to the beach every single day of the year, not just the busy ones. Well, it's good to see you guys again and it's good to be back. Like I said, I'm doing a lot better. So please hit that like button as it really helps me out and I'll see you in the next one. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.